On this episode of Tech Watch, we're going to review the new Oculus Rift CV1 Consumer Edition, the first generation consumer version of virtual reality from the Oculus Rift. Oh my god, what time is it? Time for Tech Watch. <laughs> If you've been following my channel, you would know that I have been following Oculus Virtual Reality since the DK1. And I reviewed things like penises floating in space in front of my face. That rhymed. So I've been waiting a whole long time. That was like three years ago. I've been waiting a long time for this consumer version. It's been so long, and they had a lot of delays, component shortages, they said. I was waiting months after I thought I was gonna get it. So, I was like, I need to get, I need to experience consumer VR. I need to experience it. So I went to the Microsoft store in Midtown Manhattan, where they had HTC Vive demonstration. And I went there thinking, ah, oh, yeah, I'm going to try consumer virtual reality. It wasn't a long line to try it out. But I saw the people in front of me and I was like, oh, they look a little greasy on their face. So I didn't try it out. But then the following week, I went to the Tribeca Film Festival to try out virtual reality. The HTC Vive they had there, the Oculus Rift they had there, the ticket was $50. And the main short VR story short that I wanted to see, I couldn't get on. I couldn't watch it because the, the list was already filled up. And I was like, what the fuck? Why did I pay $50? So then I stood in line for these other th things to try out these headsets. And I waited and waited in line. The lines were like 45 minutes long each. And then when after I tried it, I was like, this sucks. The resolution in the headset doesn't look much better than using maybe a $700 Android, Samsung, or LG high density display phone into a Google Cardboard, a cheap Google Cardboard viewer. That's how I've been watching porn, through my phone and through a Google Cardboard viewer. This doesn't look any better. I was like, man, virtual reality sucks. Real life is better, which is kind of true because doing things like playing guitar in a band or playing sports in real life or having sex with a girl in real life, those, are, those things are more fun in real life, in IRL, than virtual reality. But then I finally got this the Oculus Rift consumer version. I finally got it in my home. And then I, I strapped it on, up on my face, not down here, but I strapped it on and I tried out all the experiences that I thought I would like, like the stories, the movie video type stuff, the, the, the virtual desktop, I thought I would love that stuff. VR porn, I thought I would love it. It's kind of sucks. It's not that great yet. It's cool, but not great. But what I thought was awesome was the video games. I don't think of myself as a gamer. I, I don't like playing video games. I like playing video games in the sense that I like, I like technology. I'm a tech enthusiast. So I like to dabble in video games in that respect. But I don't really like playing it. But I played that game, Lucky's Tale, that comes with this bundle of this Oculus Rift. It's crazy, it's insane. It's like you're looking at these miniaturized, this, you're looking at that, that, it's like you're looking at that character from Sonic the Hedgehog, Tails, but he's like this big. And he's like, it's like a world around, it's like a little world that you're looking at, a miniaturized world that you're looking at. And it's so crazy, you can look around it and you can look in its mouth. You can, he opens his mouth sometimes, you can look in the mouth and it's so freaking weird and cool. It's, um, I don't know, that's what you gotta have. That is probably what's cool about the Oculus Rift is these miniaturized worlds that you're, you're looking at. And there's another game that's miniaturized, 
um, it's, it's a Defense Grid 2, I believe it's called. What's it called? Fuck. I don't know what it's called. I'll, it's down here. And it's a def tower defense game, and it's miniature. It's a miniaturized world. It looks like a little tiny miniaturized world, and you have to, like, stand up and look around and place your towers in different areas, and you have to find these little cubes. It's crazy. It's... So, it's so cool. Another game is called Blaze Rush, which a lot of people like on Reddit, where it's like Hot Wheels. It's a Hot Wheels racing micro machines. It's like micro machines on a racing track. And it's miniaturized. And it looks so weird. It looks like you're kind of looking at it. It looks like you're looking at Hot Wheels track and you're racing and you can look all around and it's crazy. Another thing I just purchased yesterday that's crazy is this fortune telling experience. It's not a game. I don't even know what you would call it. And it's like $7, $7, I believe. It's called Kismet. And it's a fortune telling experience. And it looks like, it's so crazy. It looks like you're in like a, like, it's, it looks like you're at a theme park. Like, it looks like, it's like you're at Disney World and they have the most high-tech thing in front of you. And it's so weird. It's like a, this thing that's talking to you and then this world around, I don't even know how to explain it. It's so weird. The resolution's not, like, ama much more amazing than your $700 phone and a Google Cardboard viewer, but um, the, they have that positional tracking, which you can look around, you move your head around, you can kind of stand, you can stand up and take a few steps here and there, walk, look around, and, and like, you see this little character right here, right? You can move your head around and see the, look up its butt if you want to. That's so weird. And the, you get that stereoscopic 3D view that it's almost like you're looking at your finger. Like, say if this is my finger, and I'm looking at my finger, but it's like I'm looking at it through goggles, right? Through, like, swing goggles with maybe a, a fine mesh, like a fine, like, take some stockings, uh, uh, some sexy, sexy stockings, and stretch it over the, the goggles. And it's almost like looking at my finger but it's like, that's so weird. It looks like it's in 3D. It looks like it's real life. I can almost stare at my finger all day long. Okay. Um, I like staring at my finger. I like, that's pretty cool. Do I even need a Rift? And now I'm gonna talk about what you really wanna know how good this is for. It's for porn. Is porn great on the Oculus Rift consumer version? It was pretty cool on the um, Google Cardboard viewer with the $700 phone with a high density display. But is it great? It's too early to tell. A lot of the videos that I've tried, the girls look like they're seven eight feet tall and they're like in your face and they're humping you and it's pretty cool but you can't scale it like you can't make them look normal size or you can't make them look bigger if you want if you wanted to have sex with a 12 foot tall person you can't do that yet a lot of the the applications they don't have the settings quite yet so i guess i can't have sex with a 12 foot tall girl yet but then I was looking on Reddit, on the subreddit, Oculus Not Safe for Work, NSFW. And I came across a lot of cool things. There's this one demo where you can have sex with these anime girls. One, I think one is called Miku Miku. And there, you can uh, make them stand anywhere and be naked if you want, or wear a bikini, or have different hair colors, and then you can make them float in the air, or you can make them float down there. It's weird, but it's so cool because it looks um, more 3D. Look, you can have we have positional tracking, so you can stick your head down there. 
Whereas in video VR porn, you can't. That has no positional. It's just only rotational. If you put your head forward, it's gonna be like, oh, like it doesn't do anything. And it's maybe a little more nauseous. Like it doesn't. You move your head forward, your head forward doesn't go forward there. And then there's this other company called VR Girls with a Z on the end. Dot com, and it's similar to that, where it's 3D models, but they're they're real 3D scans of someone's body, and it's crazy. You get up to it, and you can see their vagina, and it's like it's right in your eye. Well, because I I put my eye up to it, but um, like the eye, the put the vagina would be here, and then you would like like you would put your eye up eye up to it, and it's. Like, whoa, that's so weird. And you can like look in their ear. Like I looked in this one girl's ear and I was like, wow, that's so weird. That's the future, looking into someone's ear. And then I'm excited about this other company called Holodex with three X's on the end. It's gonna be crazy. They, they have 3D scans, these porn stars and they get, they move and they, they're like, oh, ooh, ooh. What else? What else is coming out this year for VR porn? This is gonna be Girls of Arcadia. This one Indiegogo campaign, Girls of Arcadia, they have a um, penis controller. You, like a, it looks like a flashlight. It's like a controller for your penis, and you do. I don't know what you do yet. Somehow it's a video game. And then you have to get past the demons with the horns that has the girl locked up on the, the, the wall in the dungeon. That's scary. Kind of cool. So is the consumer Oculus Rift amazing yet? It's cool. It's weird. I look around in a weird virtual world and it's crazy. It's not quite there yet. It's still in its early stages though. A lot of the developers need to figure out things. A lot of consumers, the virtual reality wearers, the audience needs to learn things. Should I wear this when I'm hungover? Who knows, maybe? But soon, the future of virtual reality is gonna be super crazy. In like the next month or two, you're gonna have video game controllers for your penis. You can have sex with 10, 12 foot tall minotaurs. It's gonna be crazy. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go play with this a little more. Um, I'll see you soon. Next time on Tech Watch. All right.